Okay. So after a beautiful uh, overview by Dr. Talwar and uh, and a uh, lot of imaging and uh, extensively covered uh, by Dr. Parveen, my job is just to stick to the current treatment protocols and the molecules that we have because most of the things and how the patients are followed up and imaging and uh, other biomarkers, everything has been discussed so well. It becomes simple. My job becomes simple. So uh, let me add something to the treatment and follow, follow up of these patients. So uh, as already mentioned, anti of therapies have uh, um, revolutionized uh, actually the treatment uh, of neovascular AMD and re reduced the AMD related bl blindness we have seen. But what is the current challenge is that uh, it, firstly, the disease is a long-term disease as seen by five years of CAT study results and 7-Up study. Uh, the challenge is to maintain this efficacy, but to reduce the number of uh, injections and follow-ups, which is uh, currently the main challenge that uh, doctors and patients uh, both face at this time. So uh, the treatment burden is not just the cost of injections over five or seven years, but for old age, people to travel over a long time and multiple visits with all the old age related comorbidities. This is the reason why after the first two years or three years, most of the patients we have seen in practice that they drop out from the um, treatment and come with a drop in vision, which is irreversible. So it is important for physician as well as the uh, patient to understand the disease nature and educate the patient accordingly. And uh, that is the most key in success of this treatment. So coming to the regimens that we have, we know already mentioned also that monthly regimens have the best efficacy, but it is totally uh, impractical. So we need an individualized treatment regime. So the, the commonly uh, um, now uh, popular one is PRN regime and treat and extend. So PRN regime is widely uh, followed in India where patient uh, is injected only when there is some fluid at the macula or drop in vision. Whereas the uh, treat and extend is more individualized, patient receives a, a, less, a fewer number of injections and fewer visits to the clinic. So let us look at uh, what this is actually. So uh, trend was a major study that compared treat and extend versus monthly injections and showed that visual acuity improvement was same compared to monthly injections with fewer visits and injections of ranibizumab uh, in treat and extend regime. And also uh, um, a large uh, real world studies of meta-analysis of around 26,000 patients uh, showed that compared to treat and extend, the PRN regime has the limitations of uh, increased visits where we have fewer injections, but uh, the monitoring visits remains monthly. And so uh, too many visits and less visual acuity gain compared to treat and extend regime in PRN. Probably this is like an under treatment or suboptimal treatment, which is uh, which is followed um, um, in many a places. So, what is this treat and extend regime that we are talking in the SRS survey? Seventy five percent of the retina specialists prefer treat and extend in neovascular AMD, unlike uh, diabetic macular edema or vein occlusion. So, here this is nothing but uh, monthly three loading doses, and once the macula is dry extend the further visits. All visits are injection visits. And these visits are extended by two weekly or four weekly until once in three months injection. At any time, macular fluid or drop in vision reduce the next further visits by two weekly or four weekly back to once in six weeks, depending on the disease activity. So let us look at a case example here, uh, wherein a uh, patient uh, with type 1 neovascular AMD the initial uh, three monthly loading doses were given. This is the fourth month visit. Patient is active. There is a sub-RP neovascularization, subretinal fluid is there. So patient gets an injection. So next, uh, because it was aflubercept, the next visit was two monthly. So after two months, patient comes, still there is uh, fluid under the macula, disease is active. So gets uh, another injection at that time and uh, still called after two months. So at this visit, the Patient's macula is dry, but still in treat and extend, patient gets the injection and extended the next injection visit to from two months to two and a half months. So at that time, an almost dry macula, bit of fluid. So at that time, still patient gets the injection. 
and try to extend it to once in three months as we just discussed now. But at that time, there is fluid here. So shorten the visit. So back to once in uh, two and a half months visit. So this is exactly what happens in treat and extend and patient gets injections, but it is tapered according to the patient's need uh, based on the visual acuity and uh, OCT dryness or presence of subretinal hemorrhage. So uh, why we need uh, uh, this uh, regime is because if you look at, as already mentioned by uh, previous speakers, that when you look at, this is the uh, five-year results after the initial monthly injection and super results with uh, ranibizumab. But when we look at the five-year results with PRN after the initial structured visit, it is back to baseline, minus one letter com compared to the baseline. And also that we know in 7-Up study, which looks at PRN after the initial monthly anchor marina at the seventh year, when you look at active exudative disease was seen in 70% of the eyes and 50% were undergoing anti of injections, PRN, and around 98% were having some sort of macular atrophy. So this is the significance. Why this happens as we have, when you look at the sustained study uh, over a long-term results, this is a uh, uh, long-term results. These fluid fluctuations that happens with PRN because you are waiting for the fluid to come to inject and uh, these fluid fluctuation, the vision that is lost by the fluid fluctuation after the injection do not regain completely. So when you look at five years or six years, there is a gradual decline in vision with this uh, PRN regime, as you can see in this um, study. So now when we look at treat and extend protocol, the Moorfields protocol, uh, they used aflibercept in this study. So they saw that the visual acuity is maintained at the end of three years. After the initial eight injection, the subsequent years, the injection substantially comes down to four injections. And at the end of three years, the vision is maintained. When you look at the six-year results, the range study, this was also with aflibercept. So they found that with treat and extend, uh, it is seen that the visual acuity has not gone down below the baseline, but it is maintained uh, uh, with the regime that you follow. So now how to extend? So it is uh, 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 either uh, to minimum two, two monthly as per the Altair study and uh, maximum it can be extended to once in four months injection. So if there is no, we have a dry macula with no fluid, extend it as we saw in the case that we discussed. And if there is a new fluid and uh, drop in vision, shorten the visits to uh, to a lesser, uh, to a frequent, more frequent in, uh, injection visit. And there's a subtle residual fluid, uh, less than uh, 100 micron here and 200 micron in fluid study. So they uh, maintain the injection uh, 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 visit uh, interval as it is. So this is how it is decided. And in uh, in newer antivirals like uh, brolizumab or aflibercept, it is seen that around 60% uh, in aflibercept and around 80% in brolizumab require a longer duration. You get a treatment-free intervals of more than three months uh, with these newer drugs. So that is what uh, Dr. Talwar was mentioning to about, that we need uh, longer acting drugs. So that is one aspect. Another aspect, how we can avoid injection, to me, this protocol is very important, not only treat and extend, treat, extend and stop protocol, where the initially it is only treat and extend after the monthly injection, extend by two weekly or four weekly to once in three months injection. We are once in three months injection and if the macula is dry, patient still receives two more three monthly injections uh, that even if the macula dry and stop the injection. So that is treat, extend and stop. These patients better than you know, uh, peri uh, always on injection, stop the injections and see. And uh, if the macula still remains, patient is put only on an observation, that is initially monthly observation and extended to once in uh, three months observation. So this, this protocol is quite uh, impressive because after eight years, it is seen that 35%, more than one third of the patients had 15 letter gain, which is very important in a long-term study, which we have seen what happened in 7-Up and CAT study with PRN. So uh, the long-term anti wedge of efficacy, uh, this study shows a main, uh, it improves or maintains the vision on a long term. So this also gives some clues to uh, one of the protocols which we could uh, take into practice. Also 
in Europe, this observe and plan regime also is quite uh, shown uh, important results because after the initial monthly loading doses, patient is just observed to see when is the recurrence interval. For example, in this patient, three months the fluid has recurred. So next three injections are scheduled, only injection visits uh, at, uh, at a shorter duration, uh, that is two and a half months uh, in this particular patient. And then the next evaluation visit is after six months uh, to look at the disease activity. And then if it is exudate, uh, exudative, then uh, shorten intervals for the next three injections. So this also has shown that the number of injections were almost similar to treat and extend, but it dramatically reduced the number of monitoring visits to the patient. So uh, hence fewer clinic visits than treat and extend regime. So lastly, uh, to touch upon uh, uh, the, the fluid study results, because uh, in this treat and extend protocol, fluid study said that if you have a subtle edema, less than 200 microns, uh, uh, that is not resolving despite monthly treatment. So that is very important, not that the fluid is good for macular health, but uh, despite monthly injection, a subtle fluid, still uh, we can extend the injections and uh, that would not cause an additional risk of vision loss after two years of study. So uh, it was visual acuity improved despite um, failure to completely resolve the fluid all the visits uh, over two years. So I, I, I would conclude saying that the anti of uh, treatment has evolved into treat and extend protocol now for good visual acuity gains with uh, fewer uh, injections and visits individualized to the patient. PRN regimes may have suboptimal visual outcomes and uh, result in irreversible deterioration of vision on a long term that we see over five years or same because of this fluid fluctuation that happens, you wait for the fluid to recur to treat the patient. So newer longer acting molecules that has been already mentioned here are promising uh, efforts to reduce the treatment burden, not only to the patient, but to physicians and the uh, crowded clinics uh, if you are going to monitor them monthly. So thank you for your kind attention.